All right, here we go. So what I want to do is I'm experimenting with some equipment here. I wanted to do a walkthrough of the Collector Art House website and test the microphone and how we do screen display recording. So walking through the page here, you go to www.collectorarthouse.com and I'm using a desktop view. The mobile view may look a little different, but this kind of gives you an orientation to the content here that I post fairly regularly and try to maintain as best I can. So when you first load the site, you land on this landing page and it kind of gives you an option here. Um, if you click around, you kind of see the mouse hover and you click the door, it's supposed to symbolize an entry into the art house. So if I click that, this jumps me over to some overview about the game itself at a very high level. Um, haven't updated this in a while, but there's kind of some hyperlinks to various content within the website. I usually just use the top panel here to go through. Uh, the shop page here is something that I just initially created very uh, roughly through some things together, uh, working with Vincent Pompetti for some of his original paintings. These are actually paintings that are not in the Sorcery TCG. Um, he only has about two alpha paintings remaining, so the supply is getting pretty scarce out there. A lot of the artists have sold everything that they, they currently have in their inventory. Um, Vincent himself just has the two left, which he'll be bringing to auction on the Sorcery uh, fan page and marketplace group on Facebook. So I encourage everybody to check that out. Um, the next auction is going to be this coming Friday, the 24th of June, um, for one of his pieces here, which I'll show when we get to the art gallery. So the Sorcery Art Gallery, this is uh, one of the best pages here on the site, one of my favorites for sure. Um, where you can go through all of these are paintings that have been done for the game. A lot of them are for the alpha sets, but there's also some that have not yet been revealed. So they're likely to be included potentially in Arthurian Legends or yet to be revealed for alpha um, as a base card or perhaps a promo or alternate art card. Um, I guess we'll find out hopefully pretty soon. Um, but as you go through here, you kind of see these are organized by artist. So thematically, it flows pretty nice. You kind of see all the artwork from, from all the different artists, uh, starting with Elvira Shakarova here. Um, these are sourced basically from all the artists' uh, web pages or their social media or perhaps reveals from the company on their social media or in Discord. I basically comb through the internet, tried to find everything I possibly could and get it all into one place. So this is very nice to just go through and see the, the artwork in its full form. Um, another thing to note is that when you see the card in its original form, one of the nice things about sorcery is that the text boxes are pretty unobtrusive. You could really get a, a sense for most of the artwork, but there's always the, the fairly large, um, I think they tried to minimize it as much as possible to really focus the art, but you get a text box that covers up the bottom of the image in many cases. Um, so for example, on this one, um, with the text box here, you don't see this little goat running from the flames. So it's pretty cool findings here. Also here in Dream Quest, this hand creeping up on the chair. Uh, when you look at it in card form, you kind of see the, the forearm a bit here, but this hand is completely obscur obscured. So um, in some cases, uh, that was done intentionally by the artist, and it really creates a different vibe for the, for the card, which is really cool. If you're buying originals or just combing through and looking at what these look like, um, so you see some of the artists, Alvira did that in several cases here. That art, a lot of this would have been obscured. Um, similarly, some of the bodies here on uh, the Guile Sirens. Some of the texts. This card is yet to be revealed, so uh, be interesting to see if this makes it into Alpha or not. Um, but going through, in other cases, just kind of the thematic design of the artwork was just extended a bit. Uh, so it was really not so impactful when you go to card form. Like here, you might be missing some of the clouds and uh, maybe some of the, the ground here, but it really does not change the vibe of the image. Um, others are definitely more intentional. Like in Tony Sulo's um, Holy Grail, he kind of hid this text. And when you get over to the Behind the Art page, I actually did a write-up of Tony's Holy Grail here so you could go read what that text means. Um, that's one of... Tony's signature calling cards is to really hide elements within his paintings and get you to, to really look close and discover some of the intricacies of his artwork. Uh, we actually did a um, giveaway contest for this one, Midland Army, um, where there's some hidden elements in here. And if you click these, you, you zoom and you kind of get the title and the, and the artist name for each of these. But if you if you look at this closely, there's he hid some Grim Reapers. Um, 
throughout here. I think there was four uh, that had to be found, and, and the winner won a exclusive limited artwork that's going to be signed by Tony and have a, um, a special Reaper uh, drawing that he's going to include there for each of those. I think it'll be a series of 50 total copies, um, and he'll be selling those um, directly through Tony. So that's something pretty cool to, to be looking out for. Um, so if we go back to the main page, you can scroll through here and kind of click through all the imagery in this view. I actually did this on Oculus Rift uh, VR and it looks really awesome too. Um, you see it on like a basically a large movie screen type projection which looks incredible with this amazing artwork. But if we X out of that, we'll go to the main page. Um, and just trying to speed things up here, if you scroll through, uh, have most of the artists captured as many paintings as they could find. There's there's definitely been some new ones revealed. I got to do some catch up as um, the latest TTS update revealed a lot of new cards. So artists started posting more um, on their Facebook or uh, websites in various places. So I tried to grab what I could and this is definitely the most comprehensive uh, singular spot on the internet, but it's not uh, quite 100% complete just yet. Definitely worth checking out. As I mentioned, a lot of these have been revealed. Um, there's some that have not been shown in card form. So for example, this ring, um, I think it's called Morgan's ring or something to that effect, is not uh, in the latest release yet. So we'll see if this, this emerges or if that'll be held for Arthurian Legends or maybe even for the uh, revised set. I would uh, suspect that probably some new artwork would be introduced even in revised to create some consumer appeal for those and some nuances, uh, maybe by way of alternate arts or even new cards to supplement the set as we get Alpha out there and start playing the game and finding uh, opportunities to improve and expand some of the, the game design concepts. That'd be pretty cool to see that coming through. All right, so you get the idea here. The next page, if you go to the behind the art, this is um, another of my favorite locations on the site. Um, so what I've done here is uh, worked with a lot of the artists to kind of get some background information on the art direction that they received from Eric Olson, who is the creator of the game and artistic uh, art director, basically, uh, for the effort and was also the art director for Grinding Gear Games and Path of Exile. Um, so they, they were able to provide some insight on the very high level direction that they received to uh, go and produce the illustration concept and then uh, some background stories about how they matured that concept and basically had some back and forth with Eric to, to kind of refine it and um, get it perfect for the game. Um, so each of these are click clickable. You go through, you click the image, and then it loads a, another page here where you see the card, um, and the card details and mechanics, and then some of the background, as I mentioned, about how, these, how the design concept came to be and where applicable um, references to uh, what inspired the image. So in this case with Royal Bodyguard, this is the full art image for the actual card. This is actually Liz Danforth, who is the painter for this card, um, in the corner here um, where Velazquez was. So this was based on Velazquez's uh, Las Meninas uh, famous painting here. Um, so you kind of see the, the um, resemblance of that original. Um, but since the Royal Bodyguard is kind of the focus of this, he's shown at the forefront here. And then um, where uh, Diego is in the back was put herself similarly as he did in his own painting, but uh, actually uh, asked Eric to obscure that a bit because the intent was not for her to be the focus of the image, but rather the, the Royal Bodyguard here um, symbolizing him guarding the Royal family. And then you see the parallels of almost kind of like painted replicas of what the original looked like. In, um, in a bit of a fantasy design twist for the game. So that one's one of my favorites, really cool artwork by Liz Danforth. Uh, moving on to the cards. Uh, so the, the theme of the set or the, the website overall is basically um, to focus on the artists and the artwork. So I organize the cards in the same way. If you look at the drop down menu, I have the cards bin by each of the individual artists, <clears throat> but then also to make it a convenient resource for collectors and uh, players or whoever uh, may be interested, you have a archive of all of the cards um, yet, yet released in the latest TTS update. And then I included a page for all of those cards that were excluded from that update. So the presumption here is that perhaps some of those will be removed from alpha set um, or others may be getting more of a significant uh, design overhaul. 
either for the Alpha set or um, perhaps push to our theory legends yet to be seen. Uh, and then they've been by type. So you have your avatars, um, the sites are the landscape style cards that serve as the sites in the game. Um, spells are your creature minions and, and spells, and then the tokens. Um, and then as I mentioned, each of the individual artists uh, have their own page individually. Um, so you can navigate through the top bar here, or you can go down and click on any of the artist images. Uh, so I'll click on Alan, Alan Pollock here as an example, and then you see all of his cards. Um, which is the same as going through this method and clicking on Alan's name here. It's underlined to show that that's where you are. And you scroll down. And again, when you go to these pages, these are all of the cards from the latest TTS update. So they're highly probable to be in the alpha set. Um, so you get a, a quick frame of reference. Um, there's a lot of people that go here frequently as they're buying paintings. If they're trying to get an alpha original, um, it's a great resource to to see and get a good sense of, of the probability that that'll indeed be in the alpha set. All right, next up here is the artist bios page. <clears throat> so this gives some background on each of the artists. This is one of the first, very first things that I stood up on the website and basically what initially prompted the name for, or the, the, um, the need for the site was that I wanted to do interviews with as many of the artists as I could. Um, and I chose to do those in written Q&A format so I could uh, be respectful of their time. Basically, my process is I come up with about 10 to a dozen, maybe at most, questions, um, email those to the artist or through Facebook Messenger or whatever means I can to um, track them down and, and try to have a conversation with them and then um, let them respond on their own time to each of those questions. <clears throat> and then once I receive those back, I do some research and... Uh, if they give me references for who their inspirations were, I go and research um, those references and hyperlink those uh, as a resource for, for fans or any viewers reading that article. Um, so that was a lot of fun for each of the artists here. I um, went and researched their social media. Um, Andrea Modesti has a pretty low profile. So here in this case, you only see his website. It's a blog style website where he has a lot of his sorcery paintings. And um, the great thing is if you wanna explore these artists, you can go in here find their website, find their social media, and also learn um, what work they've done outside of sorcery, which is, you know, their style's their style, so you find that a lot of it is stylistically very similar. Um, but in other cases, you know, they, they're pretty talented um, and can really adapt their style to uh, maybe a fantasy motif or um, different depending on what their objective is. So it's really interesting to see their work outside of sorcery um, and a lot of it being quite similar but also some being different um, and getting a sense for their capabilities and some of the amazing work that they've produced. Um, also if I've done an interview uh, with the artist, I, I have this artist interview box. You can just click right there and it'll take you to the artist interview um, and articles page and go and find out more information about that. Um, so going on here, some uh, have a, a larger social media presence so where you where they have that. I also tried to include their Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter is really the primary three that I that I looked for. And so those are all hyperlinked and you could jump and learn everything you want to know about Melissa Benson or Anson Maddox, um, two of the original alpha artists for Magic the Gathering. Um, so very high profile, amazing artist that got us all um, Legacy MTG type fans that played in the 90s. Uh, that was the appeal for a lot of us, um, discovering the game and finding some of the legendary artists that uh, produced some of our favorite cards as kids. Um, so it's a bit of a nostalgic trip and um, really awesome to see them producing again for a TCG. Moving on to interviews and articles. Um, so this is a mixed bag. They're um, tagged with a category. So <clears throat> and you have some cases of sorcery articles and other case artist interviews. I think I've done um, 10 interviews to this point, which is pretty awesome. It's a lot. I think I started in like January maybe or February. So in about five, six months time did uh, at least, um, it's almost about a third of the total artist pool. There's 35 artists. Um, a lot of them are in the, the Facebook group that I created. I think we have 28 of the 35 artists. Um, Frank Frazetta, uh, of course, is deceased. He's the 36th artist. So of the 35 living artists, we have 28 of them in the group, which is really cool to see them engaging and communicating with us fans and um, learning more about them through this these interview processes. So there's a lot of good content here, interesting stuff to discover. 
about each of the artists' backgrounds and kind of their thoughts on the game and their experience with uh, doing illustrations and many artworks for the game. A lot of the artists did uh, 10, 15, 20 plus um, illustrations for the, uh, the game at this point. Most of those being alpha, but um, we're finding that some of those, it looks like they'll be pushed to the Arthurian Legends or perhaps the revised set. So uh, more to come will be exciting to see, see what we learn. Um, and then kind of wrapping up here, the collector's corner. This is just an article I did um, with the, the help of a guy named Ryan uh, from the Discord. I'll just give his first name here. Um, for anonymity, he did this great math here uh, with some assumptions we had learned from Eric on the, the set composition, um, what the pull rates would be, and then the total population of those cards in the set. And then finally, the about page. Um, for some information about the background of the game. All right, thanks for listening and watching. Um, definitely check out the site, invite your friends to the fan page group, and uh, expect a lot more content to come. Thanks, take care.